Welcome to the Hyman Cast, a podcast of the Hyman Settlement School, where we explore the history, culture, and people that makes the Hyman Settlement School what it is today, and how this historic institution will continue to serve its mission of celebrating heritage and changing lives in Central Appalachia. I'm Corey Terry. And I'm Jordan Collins. And welcome to the very first episode um, of the Hyman Cast. Uh, the very first episode with a, a guest, I should say. We had a little bit of an introductory episode last week. Yeah, just trying to get ourselves, you know, started. Because we got to do something to get on Apple, but yeah. yeah, I had to get things set up with uh, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. That way, whenever we had this episode, it would be all ready to go. So, without further ado, we got Sarah Kate Morgan here. Hey, that's me. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Kate is our new folk arts education specialist, and uh, she just start. How, what day did you start? It's only been like a month or two. I can't really August, remember. August, August the tenth, I think. What is today? Let's I don't know. I never know what day it is. I have a watch. October oh. the <laughs> October the seventh. I was like, I was confused when I saw ten. I was like, isn't it still September? So yeah, that's, that's where I'm at in the world right now. It hasn't been September some t- for some time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit behind on, on life apparently. Um, so yeah, um, Sarah Kate is our new folk arts education specialist, and uh, we're happy to have her here and looking forward to this conversation with her today to get to know her a little better and let you all out there in the wonderful, wonderful world get to know her a little better as well. And uh, I also noticed today that we should we should uh, give a shout out to Mr. Sam Gleaves. It's his birthday today, oh, who uh, formerly birthday. held this position. So happy birthday, Sam Gleaves. I'm looking for, I, want, I want to have him on the podcast sometime soon oh too. Oh my gosh, yes. Check in on him and see how things are going, so... If he'd still have us. If he would still have us. He might be like, I am so glad that I'm away from them people now. It's like so. I left for a reason. <laughs> it was us. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Sarah Kay, just go ahead and tell us a little bit about, you know, your new position as the folk arts education specialist. Yeah, well, I mean, it's 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 a weird time to start a new job because I feel like um, this position under normal circumstances looks a lot different than what I'm doing now. But essentially, I'm, in, I'm, I'm responsible for... Art, arts programming and arts and music programming in the schools and and here at the here at the settlement school and working with working with little kids playing music helping them be creative and yeah yeah it's I was quite impressed with how well you just got <laughs> into you. it I, think <laughs> I was it was just like boom 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 you had videos going off like crazy and your little what was it called cranky yeah, oh, yeah, yeah the cranky. that thing's cool uh, what, you're working with like what 40, 40 kids now is that well, yeah, so um, so we've got our Pick and Bow program, which is all virtual, and we've got uh, 38 kids registered. Um, and then outside of outside of that, um, I'm doing some, uh, the, the part of the job that normally would be driving around to schools and visiting kids in real life is all virtual. So some of that is divided between um, pre-recorded stuff and then live sing-alongs with little kids. Um, and so... My focus this semester was just focusing on K through third graders, just the the, the little babes, um, and so that's that's been really fun. And there's there's 328 across not county, so <laughs> if ever you needed to know that information, I oh, got wow. that. <laughs> <laughs> I had fun before I came over here. I guess you were doing one of these uh, Zoom classes with them yeah. and <laughs> I kept hearing like cat sounds and <laughs> <laughs> sheep and then oh McDonald had a farm yep, it was, yep. that was fun <laughs> um so yeah uh, we we'll, I want to get into a little bit more about how things are going with your job and and um, pick and bow and working with kids a little bit later on but first we just kind of want to get a little bit about uh your life and and where you're from and what things were like growing up Oh, well, I grew up in Sharps Chapel, Tennessee, which is north of Knoxville and uh, south of Cumberland Gap, so right on close to the Tennessee-Kentucky border. Um, and Sharps Chapel is a tiny, tiny little farming community. Um, it was, uh, it's, it's a peninsula. It's essentially a really big peninsula in the middle of Norris Lake, and it's um, there's one road in and one road out. It's the, it's the same oh. road. <laughs> <laughs> That's relatable. How many traffic lights do you have there? Oh, we don't have any traffic oh, lights. No, wow. not a single traffic light. Hyman's big time. <laughs> we got two up in here. <laughs> I had one at least. So. <laughs> <laughs> the nearest traffic light is probably 25 minutes away. Like wow. If you were to drive to a traffic light. It's like... Light. I tell people I have to drive 25 minutes to get to Walmart, and you get to tell people I have to drive oh. 25 minutes to get to a traffic light. Lord, 
We had to drive an hour to get to Walmart. Oh, man. <laughs> I couldn't imagine being an hour away from Walmart. Like, <laughs> too much. What would we do without Walmart? Really? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it was really rural and uh, I loved it. Loved it. My, my family um, had a big farm. Grew up, grew up on a sheep farm. Uh, we at, at the at the height of our sheep career, we all had about <laughs> there's about 150 head on the farm, and it was through 4-H, and um, yeah, it was it was a really fun time. I have very minimal experience with sheep, but it's not good experience. <laughs> I worked on this little family farm when I was in college, and uh, just did the chores and things of that sort in the mornings and the evenings. And they were in like this fenced in area and they all tried to run out on me as I opened up the gate and got me lit up by the electric fence that was <laughs> around it. And it shocked them too, because they were like touching my leg and then they ran back inside. But yeah, I had to like sit down for a little bit after that. It was pretty rough. <laughs> my closest experience, I had one ram and that's the last ram. Aww. First and last ram I'll ever have, <laughs> sir. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you you grew up on a sheep farm. Did you yeah. get you know, wool items? Did you get to have, like, a nice <laughs> fur coat or whatever? No, no, we didn't. We The sheep we raised were uh, for show animals. So uh. so they weren't necessarily for, like, meat production or wool production. Okay. Um, but, yeah, so our summers were full of, of traveling around and carting all these sheep to different to different fairs. And I think the older I get, the more I miss it. And I think when I was little, I didn't appreciate it as you much as I do You could just go ride now. around with Jason sometime. <laughs> show goats and stuff. <laughs> be a big time. <laughs> what a good time. <laughs> yeah. So what was, uh, what? when did you get started in your childhood working with music and things oh. of that sort? How, how did that come to be? Um, well, my granddad built my first dulcimer when, well, he built it before I was alive. <laughs> and then um, he passed away when I was like five or six. And my parents found this dulcimer stashed away in their closet when I was like seven or eight wow. and um they drug it out and they were like oh we should get sarah to you know play this because they knew i had some sort of musical ability you know just from observation so uh yeah around around seven um we got the instrument strung up and started playing it and at first i really did not enjoy it it was hard because i didn't have much of an attention span like most seven-year-olds Same. <laughs> um, that's me not now. much has changed <laughs> 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 I'm just better at it. <laughs> That's all. Um, but yeah, after they were like, just give it a year, and if you still hate it, you can you can move on to something else. But after how did that, they, I loved it. How did they know that you were musically inclined? Like, what was the <laughs> signal? You know. <laughs> Well, like every like every good Southern girl, you know, you grew up singing in church, you know, and that's that's the that's the stamp of approval. Mom mom says that um, when I was really little, like just a, just a toddler toddling around she said that uh she could watch me i would go out to the front porch and just stand there and just listen and she was like what is she listening to this kid <laughs> is crazy <laughs> but what were you listening <laughs> to <laughs> she it was, i was listening to the birds because oh. we live way out in the middle of the woods and there's always birds right. yapping around and so yeah that that's according to my mother <laughs> that's that's the myth the legend that's, that's the myth and the legend <laughs> of sarah so did you feel like you was like one with the birds and oh, you just yeah. wanted to sing with them? <laughs> exactly. Yes, that was, that was me. It's like, like that scene from Shrek where Fiona <laughs> sings to the bird and it explodes. I <laughs> <laughs> I'm more like Snow White. You know, I just I just you talk gather the all the woodland animals to myself. They do all my stuff for me. And I guess you're a heavy sleeper too. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, that's cool. Um, so um, what was it like growing up in, in Sharps Chapel? Yeah. Tennessee is, well, I imagine it's kind of similar to here, but yeah. it's, you know, what was that like? It's nice. It was, it was really sweet. I loved it. We, you know, like I said, had a big farm. I was homeschooled Ooh. all the way through growing up. And so it was nice to be able to, um, you know, make, make our own schedule and, and be able to play outside a lot and, mm. and make the world our, my classroom. That was fun. Um, yeah. There's not a lot to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> so... When did when did you I guess with your music start to play more professionally and and do all that stuff that you've been doing? Um, probably in high school, um, I started kind of going to old time festivals and music festivals, and and you know my interest in in Appalachian music in general just started with the Mountain Dulcimer, and I went to like dulcimer centric events and and dulcimer 
things. Um, but, you know, the older I got, that really sparked an interest in Appalachian folklore and Appalachian art and music and history and people and the flora and the fauna of this region. And that really just broadened my perspective and really deepened my love and appreciation for where I grew up. Um, and I think that's the story of a lot of young folks that grew up in southern Appalachia. Growing up, we miss so much because we're not looking for it. You know, we, yeah. we miss right. we miss out on a lot of the beauty of the music and culture. Living in Louisville for four years, I didn't realize what I had. <laughs> it's just yeah. like, please get me back there as quick as possible. So yeah. Yeah. I spent four years in Lexington, so, you know, it's you forget how nice the birds sound and how nice it is to be so close to nature. So I, I definitely get what you're saying there. Yeah. I remember sitting in traffic one day. It's like maybe a month before I was about to move back, and I was just so happy. It's like in a month, I don't have to deal with this anymore. <laughs> sitting in traffic every day of my life. Um, so, uh, so your family, I guess, maybe your grandpa is it is everybody sort of musically inclined is it that type of family or is it kind of just a few people like um, I know I know some some families it's just like everybody in the family <laughs> is just very gifted with such things that's but. that's as as uh, lovely and, and delightful that would as that would be that is not the case <laughs> <laughs> oh that's sort of a kind of a maybe an Appalachian stereotype. It's a positive Appalachian stereotype, but <laughs> nevertheless it is. Um, my the closest relative that I have that was musical in, in in a in a in a big way was my great grandfather. He played the banjo. Um, he was also a photographer and a, and a, he owned this little shop in North Carolina. He seemed like a cool dude. But nobody else on in, in my family played music really. They all they all are very special and talented in their own way, but not, not musically. It was it was always Sarah's thing, and I wish, I, I hope that I, I feel like my younger siblings might have avoided playing music because they knew that this was Sarah's thing, oh. but but I hope not. <laughs> my brothers had a, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, a punk heavy metal band at some <laughs> point. I, I remember just watching, going over there and watching them practice, and when they weren't there, going in and playing drums and things like they probably didn't want me to, but. Uh, yeah, that was always fun to watch. I was I was never uh, musically inclined at all. I, I feel like if somebody would teach me, I could drum, but probably not <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. Drumming's hard. My cousin tried to pick that up. You know, I'm I'm not. I wouldn't call myself inclined to music, but I I play a little bit guitar and I play a little bit of ukulele on occasion. So I do a little bit, but that's drumming a, is hard. That's an inclination. That's perfect. It's more like an inkling. <laughs> Um, so I can't, did you, where did you go to college at? You didn't go to Moorhead, did you? You went, I did. okay. I thought yeah. you went somewhere else and well, then went to Moorhead. That's also true. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> my, my, my degree is from Moorhead. Um, I, my first year I went to a small private Christian school in Virginia, um, Patrick Henry college. And then I transferred to Moorhead and, uh, spent the other four years there. What was you doing at Patrick Henry? What was your degree at that point? It was my main goal was just to get like my gen eds out of the way. And I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do at that point. I wasn't sure if I wanted to get a degree in music at all. Um, but after I spent a year there, I was like, yeah, music, music is where I want, where I want to go. And then you transferred to Moorhead yeah. and what was, what was the degree program there you completed? Um, it's a bachelor's of arts in traditional music. Yeah. And then I also studied Appalachian studies and uh, arts administration as minors. Sweet. Um, so yeah, tell me a little bit. Uh, you you worked with the was I can't remember what it's called the the school traditional school of arts yeah. there and you, did you do like the touring things that they did? Yeah, yeah. So it's the the Kentucky Center for Traditional Music is the is the is the program name or the the, the building name, um, and uh, yeah, it was it was a really wonderful four years. Like I miss it. I miss it so much. It was such a good time and playing music every single day and surrounded by people that that care about the music and, and the spirit of the music and, and, and also, you know, ca caring about each other. It was a real family. And um, uh, the touring group uh, that represents the traditional music program is called the Mountain Music Ambassadors. And we <laughs> traveled around um, regionally. We went to, we played at the John C. Campbell Folk School, one of our sister folk, sister settlement kind of folk schools. <laughs> okay. um, and uh, uh, played, played there, played at the, at the uh, Carter Family Fold, um, we played at the International Bluegrass uh, Music Awards Festival in Raleigh. 
Um, so it was a great time packing a bunch of instruments around in a big bus. <laughs> just <laughs> went good. all over, didn't you? It was good. Yeah. Sounds like fun. So what do you you do things like to your like on your own too as well, right? Do you do lots of shows of that, or how does that go? Yeah. Um, when I when I graduated high school, I took like a year and a half um, a gap year because I didn't know where I wanted to go to school yet, and so I played music like full time and just hit the hit the road. Like went on a couple like different month or two month long traveling stints and traveled around. Um, and uh, played music full time, and then all through all through college, you know, I'm I, I did a lot of shows on the weekend, and pretty much every summer, my summer job was traveling around and playing music and teaching music at old time camps. Um, wow. Yeah, I've been to been to California and the UK, and, and I wish I could someday. have had that sort of hookup when I got out of high school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's like don't cut grass if you want, I guess, but that's all you got going for you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I mean, it, it's not quite as glamorous <laughs> maybe as I made it sound. I mean, just traveling around to like little coffee shops and there might be five people there listening to your music and that's I mean, good <laughs> yeah. going to california though that's that's pretty cool you know i've, I've never been out west at all so if i, I mean, could travel across the country and somewhat pay for it by things that i do that'd be pretty cool somewhat but somewhat is the keyword there. yeah i'm assuming you probably didn't make much money traveling all over the place but it's something yeah it's i mean you it and somewhat funded the trip so you're not you, too much out of you, your pocket you were doing what you love too yeah. so that's that's yeah. always a plus yeah, good experience, I'm sure. Um, so did you just graduate this past year or has it in been? In December. In yeah. December, okay. Um, what? How did you find out about the settlement school and what sort of led you here? I've, well, I've, I've known about the settlement school for, for years and years just because I, I, mean, I grew up knowing about it. That's hilarious because I lived here and I didn't really know anything about it until well. like I moved back. <laughs> so. yeah, same, I lived 30 minutes from here and I was like, what is this place? Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've known about it and, uh, and love, you know, loved the mission. Um, I, I had never been able to spend a lot of time here, but just traveling through and like waving at it as I passed. <laughs> had you ever came here and played music before? No, oh. I had not, but, but, um, it's good to be here now. Did um, you ever come to Folk Week or anything? No. I grew up knowing about it and I think my, the, the closest, um, connection I had to it was Randy. Because um, starting out at Moorhead, um, I started like a square dance series, and we had Randy come and call, and he talked about the folk school, and I was like, oh man, what a cool job he has! <laughs> I would freaking love that job. And then Sam, and then Sam got that job, and I was so excited. And it was just, you know, just a, a, a future planning. I was like, that's such a dream job for me. And there's a similar position at at folks at folk schools all over the nation, you know, um, sort of the music and art person at at settlement schools or folk schools. Um, yeah, and then then I. And then uh, a couple months ago, I got a call from Sam, and he was like, hey, hey, <laughs> <laughs> do you want this job? <laughs> um, and, also, and so he, he, was, he was really sweet and sort of talked me As into always. applying. <laughs> yeah. he was As very, always. He recommended you very heavily. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I wouldn't say he was completely wrong either because our ditty that we start with is a Sarah Kate original. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sorry, Sam, but we had uh, one of your songs lined up on my little thing here, and uh, Sarah recorded something, and we went with that instead. <laughs> <laughs> she gave us some hard bluegrass real quick. Yeah, I told her I like heavy metal, so give me something close to that bluegrass twang to it. <laughs> it won my heart. Um Awesome. So you've been here since August. Um, how would you say things are going so far? Are you enjoying yourself? I am. I'm loving it. Everybody everybody that is in the office that I get to hang out with every day is really fun to hang out with. That's really nice. Um, I feel like I haven't been able to like get to know the community as well because like, right now is a yeah. hard time to like, I can't run around and like bang on people's rooms and be like, hey, let's, uh, let's play music or let's hang out, you know. Yeah. Um, but eventually I'm looking forward to it. To yeah you know, to play music with folks. and I always try to make an effort to have the apartment folk come down and have dinner with us and yeah. do things of that sort. So hopefully we can do that for too long and have a bunch of people over. Yeah, um, hopefully. I love a good meal, Corey. Yeah. <laughs> if, if life ever gets back to normal, um, which I'm around you all I'm every sure day, so it really, I mean, we could probably do it anyway, but I just haven't thought about it yet. So <laughs> we should do that sometime soon. Um, sure. So uh, is there any, what would you say is the biggest struggle that you're having so far with how uh, with the pick and bow program things being online I'm assuming it's probably quite the quite the struggle I think I mean it's it's new for everybody it's new for me it's new for students it's new for teachers and 
uh, one a kindergarten teacher um, I was talking to last week said something that I very much identified with. She goes, we are building the boat while we are sailing it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it's like, that's perfect. It's a good analogy for a lot of <laughs> things. And, and we're all drowning. <laughs> <laughs> we're, all, we're all trying our best not to drown. But um, introducing folks to new technologies and helping them feel comfortable with new technologies and sort of getting beyond that barrier and uh, trying to connect with people you know, in spite of, of these technologically things that are in between us. Cause it's not really, it's not, you're not really able to say, Oh, I don't do technology anymore. Cause that's, that's our option. We yep. don't have a time to things. figure it out. Yep. Yeah. So is, is it, is it a challenge even more so to teach kids how to, pi- how to play instruments <laughs> over yeah. it? Or is it, or did you find that it's working decently or? Yeah, I mean, it's it's the I just can't brag enough about our pick and bow instructors. They are doing such an amazing job, and the you know the the fundamentals are the same, but the flow of information is differently. It you know the information transmits from to student to teacher in a different way and a little bit slower sometimes. Um, but once you get kind of the rhythm of digital e- education, it it starts to flow and, and um, the instructors are just doing an incredible job and yeah, I'm so proud of them. Yeah. I, I know you're working with Carrie, right? But yeah. wh- who are some of the other people that you've been working with? Yeah. So we've got Carrie Carter, Car- Carter, Carrie yeah, Carter. Carter. We've, so we've got uh, fiddle, banjo, mandolin and guitar and Carrie Carter and Megan Bryant are, are both our fiddle instructors. Melanie Turner is our banjo instructor, Scott Napier and uh, Pearson Hobbs and Elizabeth Bowman and um, uh, Delana Sparkman are our bi- our guitar teachers. Guitar is very popular. Um, and Lauren Price is our mandolin instructor. And they wow. are local, except for Elizabeth. She was she. I brought her in from Moorhead. She's one of my oh. one of my buds from Moorhead. But she's our she's our sort of backup instructor. Sweet. Yeah. So, has there been any like victory moments so far? <laughs> any wow, this is awesome sort of things happen yet? Yeah. Or? Yeah. I mean, it's. It's so fun to like see the smiles on their faces when when we're playing music and um, you know in 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 ten years these kids are probably not gonna remember how to play maybe they will but maybe they won't remember how to play Boldham Cabbage Down on the fiddle but they will remember that they had a teacher that really cared about them and helped them have a good time during a really weird time in their lives and that's that's our goal. That's nice. That's. I don't even have anything sarcastic to say about that. That's, <laughs> that's wonderful. I was just going to say something negative about 2020 in general, but I'll refrain. Um, so uh, what are some goals that you have with the program or with traditional arts? Is there anything uh, new that you're wanting to initiate or uh, anything that you want to change that we already have going or anything of that sort? I feel like right now I'm kind of in a, in a just a, uh, absorbing mode. I just kind of want to get a feel for the school and understand um, how things work under normal circumstances before I like make any wild <laughs> changes. Um, I do know that I, I would love to have um, regular on-campus musical events. So like a regular every month, the first Saturday every month, uh, you know, the first Saturday of every month, come to the settlement school and do a square dance or every, or come for a, for a, a concert, you know. I think those kind of regular you know, community building um, over the long term is, is something I'd love to do. And and uh, doing things that involve the whole family, um, that encourage, that are set up to be family friendly and family accessible, um, you know, to help to help families connect better with, with, with each other through music and through art. Mm-hmm. I would love to have Folk Week return, which I guess they was still... They're still doing a reunion sort of thing, but that was always a really fun week to be a part of, which I didn't really ever do anything, but it was just fun to watch it, hang yeah. out with people, yeah. and of course, eat the yeah. food. Yeah. <laughs> God, so, I love the food. Yes. <laughs> it's what I live for. It's what I come to work for every summer, it's food every day. Just the food, <laughs> not the work. <laughs> and we like the work, too. All right. Um, so we're going to get to some lightning round questions okay, and, and throw some questions at you. Feel free to elaborate on things if you need to. Um, you don't have to be like boom, boom, boom. Um, oh, I'm so going to boom, boom, boom it. Here all right. Go. You, you, <laughs> might, you <laughs> might boom, boom this first question. 
What is the reason for your disdain of soup? Okay, okay. God gave me teeth and <laughs> a jaw for a reason. I don't like the idea of of slurping down something without chewing it. So it's a chew. I mean, it, I'm, am I am I am I a child? No. I <laughs> <laughs> There we go. That's that's my lightning round. <laughs> soup is delicious. There's so I many had soup varieties. for lunch today. It was I mean, well, it, you know, sex, sex, whatever. It's fine, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing over there? <laughs> All right. Do you, you have just, a? Oh, go ahead. You just made so many enemies <laughs> on our podcast. First episode, Sarah Kate. The pro supers are gonna get you. Hey, you asked the question, bud. <laughs> Did you have a bad experience at some point in life? No, no. I just, it's just, just naturally. Just natural innate hatred. <laughs> what, a, what about a broth? You know. Oh, like, that's even worse. That's the worst kind. You like, you just want to drink some broth or something? Like chicken soup? It's a chicken noodle soup. No. 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 Then you've definitely made some enemies. <laughs> I love soup. All right. So, uh, what is a nickname that your parents or family used to call you, or maybe still call you? Mom would call me Sarah Barra. Sarah Barra. Sarah Barra. Why for just? rhymed just rhymed i guess <laughs> fair enough what's your what's your favorite holiday christmas duh christmas <laughs> do you want to know why i yes. do okay so our our family tradition was we would have breakfast in the barn with all the sheep early in the morning we'd get up and wow. we'd go truck over to the barn kind of like a nativity make. scene exactly Ex- yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> And except Jesus wasn't there, <laughs> um, but we had uh, we have like uh, biscuits and sausage and biscuit sandwiches. Mom would make. That was sounds good. That's why she make a good biscuit. Yes, of course. I'm trying to perfect my biscuit making. It's it, you it varies. Call, you gotta call my mama. I've perfected my biscuit making method. Open the can, throw it in the oven. Oh, you got one well, of those exciting, dangerous kinds. <laughs> Yeah, they they explode. explode. <laughs> oh, those were so exciting. <laughs> those are exciting. I've never made, maybe I haven't made biscuits from those. Now, before. do you, okay, important question. When you unopen, when you unopen, when you open a can of biscuits, do you use a spoon or do you whack it on the counter? I whack it on the counter. You whack it on the counter. I was raised right, Sarah Kate. <laughs> <laughs> whack it on the counter. What is a place that you most want to travel? Wales. Hi, I'm in Kentucky. <laughs> second place first place obviously hymen and second place whales whales i don't know anything about whales i mean really me neither <laughs> is that the place that's kind of like here like it's, they had coal industry yep okay exactly, yep i was thinking yep. that like, yep. that's all i, I know mean, of whales can. i have no idea what it looks like <laughs> it's beautiful i've i've been i've been close to whales but i haven't really traveled in whales but i say that because my family uh, our ancestors are from there so oh. Oh. visit yeah interesting Favorite TV show? Andy Griffith show. Andy Griffith. I can get down with that. I can't. I can't whistle the tune, but I wish I could because <laughs> I would. <laughs> I guess it's the right tune. We tried. <laughs> You're great. All right. Since you don't like soup, what is a combination of food that you enjoy that other people find disgusting? Okay. Like Doritos, like Doritos dipped in sour cream, just like plain sour cream. I think I could get behind that. That's like, but that's not even that gross. That's like no, I'm not a huge sour cream fan. So <laughs> oh, that's not well, sour cream is I mean, like my favorite thing. It's kind of like the that. Taco Bell lo- Dorito Locos yeah. tacos. Yeah. Like I expected it to be better, but it wasn't <laughs> that great. It was everything I expected it to be <laughs> and more. I needed more nacho flavor on it, I think. And then I might would have liked it better. Would you ask for more, Corey? They <laughs> made a Dorito into a taco well, shell. I, I don't think it was as a legitimate of a Dorito as a, as a real Dorito. Corey, I, you need to be less high maintenance. <laughs> That's <is> true. <laughs> All right, this is an important question. Which animal adds more joy to the world? Squirrels or llamas? Llamas. I was not expecting that. I mean, have you seen a llama? I, I mean, have. they seen look wild. <laughs> have, have you not seen the squirrels outside of your apartment just having oh, the time of their it. lives? Oh, they're so cute. Whenever I was coming over here earlier, there was a ground squirrel like right in front of me. And it was not scared at all. And then it just like all of a sudden disappeared down a hole. And okay. I was like, that's amazing. But imagine if that was a llama right in front of you. Disappearing down a dis- hole? That would be even wilder. And spit in my face. and then <laughs> I've been spit on by a llama before. Did you have llamas with your sheep? No, no. This was at like a petting zoo. <laughs> ah, okay. That's a terrible experience yeah. for his wedding too. <laughs> <laughs> but you 
You've never seen the fat squirrel that sits underneath the bird feeder up there. He yes. just lays out. That's. But imagine, imagine if it was a llama. They like, but they don't do that. <laughs> they don't like do that. Fly though. from the trees and land on that bird feeder and just start chowing down. Have you never seen that? Yeah, they're it's ambidextrous. Beautiful. We were obviously very biased with this question. I can yeah. tell. I feel personally attacked by <laughs> you should. right now. I mean, I was just expecting the obvious <laughs> answer out of that. But. <laughs> All right. All right. So here's a more serious answer. Who inspires you? Oh, gosh. Hmm. Yeah, that's Ooh. a stumper. I mean, probably June Go Forth. June Go Forth was my first music teacher. And she... In high school or... Yeah. In grade school. Grade school. Okay. Wow. She um, uh, she taught me how to play dulcimer. Wow. And she was she is a retired gym teacher, and oh. so she was equally encouraging and enthusiastic and also terrifying because <laughs> she would she would if you did something right she would jump up and down and scream and be like yes and then but if you did something wrong she would also jump up and down and scream and like, so no. no matter so you were in a constant state of terror no matter <laughs> if you were doing something right or wrong but i think she also helped me get over like some social anxiety when i was really little and like That's i was nice. very shy and very scared and so she really helped me with that now, after you finished your lessons, did she make you climb up a rope? Because <laughs> no. that's, essenti- that's an essential Lord, life Lord, I would have quit on the first day. <laughs> Same. <laughs> All so. right. So I feel like we're just going to get a not very good answer to this last question. Yeah. So I made this one because <laughs> the disdain for soup. Okay. If you could be any kind of soup, what soup would you be and why? Probably just okay. Do, would you count chicken and dumplings as a soup? That's not no that that because that would be the most unsoup soup that there is. That could be you as a soup though. That's me as a soup then. You're so you're you're so not a soup, you know. <laughs> or cider because that could also be a soup. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. I don't either. <laughs> cider as a soup. If you poured out your bottle of cider and you just drank it with a spoon. That would be the only way I would I would I could call that okay. soup and I would be happy. I guess I guess technically <laughs> it's apple soup. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if there is such a thing. Yeah, you could maybe put like applesauce in it and give it a little texture. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's disgusting. <laughs> All right. Well, Sarah Kate, um, we're gonna get you to play a little song for us if you could. Yeah. Um, so we'll get set up with that. Um, well, we've talked a lot about my background, so I feel like this song would be a good, a good way, a good, a good fit. Um, but this song is um, one I wrote when I was in a phase of writing music that was, it wasn't quite gospel, but it wasn't not gospel. <laughs> so it's just sort of a gospel adjacent. I'm trying to make it a thing. It's a new genre I'm working on. <laughs> gospel. Sidebar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gospel proxy. <laughs> so uh, this is this is a song that will be on my next album, which it was kind of derailed because of COVID, but eventually we'll be releasing this. Um, but it's called Heaven on Heaven in My Mind. Under the shade 
That was beautiful, Sarah. Thank you very much for playing that for us. Um, Thank you. Anything else that you want to add to the to the podcast today? That's all I got, man. All you got? <laughs> well, how are some ways that people uh, can follow you? Uh, any social media, website, anything of that yeah. sort? How can they keep up with what you're doing when that new album's coming out? Yeah, you can find me at sarahmorganmusic.com. Um, and you can also find me on Facebook, Sarah Kate Morgan, and, and Instagram and all that. On the gram. All right. We appreciate it. Appreciate you for being our first guest. And I uh, feel so honored. Thank you so much. You should be honored. It was a great guest. It was <laughs> a great guest. Great first episode, Sarah. Thank you very much. And with that, Sarah Kate has left the cabin studio and uh, thankful for her for coming on the podcast today, being our very first guest. I think that was a pretty good, pretty good first episode. Yeah, good think? start. Plenty good of banter. Start. Perfect. Good banter few awkward moments which is to be expected with me and yeah it's good i'm just naturally awkward so yeah. this is my socially, this is my on setting yes just socially awkward at its finest okay uh so uh something else we want to do with these podcasts every uh, time we have one is to have a little bit of announcement time uh, to let you know what's coming up here at the settlement school um, which is not nearly as much as things usually are during this wonderful 2020 year. Um, everything is canceled, and if it's not canceled, it's virtual. And that's exactly what we have coming up on October 20th is our next Agrilacha series. And our guest that day will be Misty Skaggs. Uh, and the, and the topic is going to be planting by the signs. And she's going to be uh, reading some stories and superstitions uh, from Eastern Kentucky farmers. And uh, you can uh, link up with that on our Facebook page, um, on that day, I think they usually begin at about seven o'clock. Is that right? Yeah, seven. Seven o'clock. Uh, you'll see uh, the live stream come up on our Facebook page, and you can tune into that there. And then on November second through the seventh, we have our uh, Dumplings and Dancing uh, annual Dumplings and Dancing coming up that week. Uh, as, as as things start to be expected, it is also virtual uh, this year, and uh, we will have. Uh, events every night uh, also on our facebook page workshops uh with ronnie lundy 
Kristen Smith, Weta Michael, Kent Hubbard, uh, Lois Matus, and also Philip Jameson. Uh, we'll be having the workshops there each night that you can tune into and be a part of. Um, I'm really missing the the actual Dumplings and Dancing this year. That's one of my favorite events that we have. Yeah, it's always a good time. Yes, so you should definitely tune in and uh, see what these folks have to have to offer and teach. Um, and then across the creek, we have the dyslexia program, and we are now reopening the Reading Corps tutor recruitment. So we're seeking enthusiastic tutors to help children who have char- uh, dyslexic characteristics and helping them read at grade level. So if you would like to join our program, we have now started recruiting in Floyd, Breathitt, Leslie, Letcher, and Pike County Schools. So you can contact me at Jordan at Heinemann if you want to get get a uh, if you want a job if you want to get involved with if that. you would if like you, to if get you need involved. a job uh, and that's not a like normally the AmeriCorps positions are a full year these positions are these are three quarter time and half time position part time part time positions. Okay. Yeah, so get up with Jordan about that if you're interested in a, a job with our after or not after school program, our reading core program. Uh, and another thing that we also want to do with, with every podcast that we put out is have a, a donor recognition and gratitude period. Uh, we always want to recognize our donors and uh, let you know how grateful we are for your support of the Hyman Settlement School and our work here. Uh, we couldn't do this without you. And uh, this week we want to recognize Doctor and Miss. Dr. and Mrs. Robert and Carol Rogal. Uh, Carol is the state regent of Kentucky. Um, and I think she's also on our board. Or maybe yes. she's not now, yes. but she was at some point. Um, yes. So we are thankful for, for her and her husband's support of our work here at the Hyman Settlement School. And we also want to thank uh, the Berea College Appalachian Fund, who recently uh, awarded us an, a grant, a grant uh, in support of our Pick and Bow program. So we are thankful for that as well. And as always, we are thankful for uh, the DAR, the Daughters of the American Revolution, uh, for their continued and faithful support over the years. Uh, We couldn't do this without the DAR for sure. And uh, yeah, so we are thankful for you all. And um, if if you have enjoyed this podcast, uh, then we would ask you to follow us on Facebook. Um, You can also subscribe to the podcast on your uh, podcast streaming platform of choice, uh, whether it be the Apple iTunes podcast or on spotify uh, so you can subscribe there leave us a review that will help us out help our ratings so leave us a rating and uh, be sure to share us too yeah and share us on facebook share us on social media uh we want to make this thing a success get people uh, more involved at the, with the settlement school through this uh through these means so um yeah do that if you could and uh we will see you in two weeks when we release our next episode uh, our next guest will be Kristen Smith at the Wrigley Tap Room, and uh, we'll be talking about dumplings and dancing. Uh, my name is Corey Terry. And I'm Jordan Collins. And we'll see you next time. The Heinemann Cast is brought to you by the faithful and generous supporters of the Heinemann Settlement School. For over 100 years, we've been celebrating heritage and changing lives in central Appalachia. If you're interested in supporting the work of Heinemann Settlement School, you can go to our website at www.heinemann.org, or you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the handle at Heinemann School.